Hey y'all, Coach Unify here with a very short but powerful video. It's short because I need you to watch it all the way to the end. And it's powerful because we're going to answer some extremely important questions about this coronavirus. You need to watch this video all the way to the end because there's a war against biblical truths. And by watching this video all the way to the end and even clicking on one of the links that will be given to you at the end of this video and by hitting the like button and by putting a comment in this video, you send a message to the YouTube algorithm saying that this video is worth watching. YouTube will then give many other people the opportunity to hear this vital information. So do those things. Hit the like button. Make a comment. Watch the video to the end. Click on the links at the end. But also consider posting this video on your Facebook page, in your Twitter account, and anywhere else that it can be seen so this information can get out. By doing so, you will be helping your brothers and your sisters that may not have this information. You will be helping to save lives and you will be rewarded for it by our father and creator who wanted this information shared with everybody talking about his word. Now, let's get to the power part of this video. Answering the question about the coronavirus. The first question is, is it in the Bible? The answer is emphatically yes, the coronavirus is in the Bible. And many more viruses and plagues are in the Bible. Looking right here in Matthew 24 and verse 7, you see the word pestilence. But when you look up a synonym for the word pestilence, you see plagues, epidemics, viruses, endemics, pandemics, diseases, deadly diseases, virulent diseases, which are all terms being used in our news today to describe the coronavirus. The coronavirus is in the Bible. It may be the first of many viruses that we have to look forward to. Now, in chapter 24, this is the Messiah talking to his apostles who asked, how will they know when the end time will come? The Messiah went on to give them hints and clues and tell them what to look for to know that the end time is upon them. In Matthew 24, he talks about the tribulation. And what will go on during the tribulation. But notice right here in verse 8 how he says all of these are the beginning of sorrows. Meaning this stuff occurs before the tribulation. It is after verse 8 that you will start to learn about the actual tribulation. The stuff that comes before verse 8 is what leads up to the tribulation. And you look, the pestilences are given in verse 7. And to know that we're in this time that's being talked about, look what else is listed here in verse 7. Famines are listed in verse 7. Famines is one of the things that will occur in the beginning of sorrows. Are there famines going on around the world? Definitely. There are people starving even in America. You can imagine what's going on in the third world nations these days. And then the nations that are not providing stimulus checks in these hard times. He says earthquakes in diverse places. And by diverse he means various, miscellaneous, assorted, sundry, several, distinct desperate or different. Look at how many earthquakes are going on around the world in places, some of which we've never even heard of. Up there in verse 6, he starts to tell us about wars and rumors of wars. 
In verse 7, he says, the reason for these wars is that nations shall rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Does this not remind you of the Arab Spring? And all of the wars that are going on around the world at this time? He's letting us know that we are in the beginning of sorrows. This is the beginning of sorrows. Beginning of griefs, distresses, beginning of troubles and burdens, beginning of disappointment, worries and torments. The coronavirus is just part of the beginning. You have to come all the way down to verse 31 to see when the elect are gathered together. So those that are talking about flying away and going to some special place, not having to worry about all of these troubles and sorrows and tribulations on the earth are deceiving many. And what's at the root of their deception? Telling you that you don't have to obey the scripture. You don't have to do what the Bible tells you to do. They tell you that all you have to do is believe hard enough and you will be saved. They never tell you that you have to obey the commandments, the statutes, the precepts, the judgments, the ordinances, the mandates. Well, let me show you one statute that will keep you from getting the coronavirus. You have to understand that if the father told you that these pestilences and stuff was coming on the world, that he must have told you what you should be able to do about it. If his word told you of plagues, his word should have also told you about preventions. Well, you jump over here in the book of Jubilees. Chapter 15, and we see how we protect ourselves from these diseases, the pestilences, coronaviruses, COVID-19. Now, we understand that these are translations of the scripture. The original scripture was written in Aramaic or Hebrew. And over here in Jubilees, the word plague is used instead of pestilence. But when we look up the synonym for the word plague, it includes the word pestilence, disease, infections, pandemics, epidemics, outbreaks. And when you look here in the middle of verse 15, he says, And no plague shall come upon them to slay or to smite in that year. This is Holy Scripture telling us how we can protect ourselves from the plagues and from the pestilences, the epidemics and pandemics taking over the world. Let me read the entire verse. He says, And do thou command the children of Israel to observe the Passover throughout their days, every year, once a year, on the day of its fixed time. And it shall come for a memorial well pleasing before the Lord. And no plague shall come upon them to slay or to smite in that year in which they celebrate the Passover in its season in every respect according to his command. This is telling us that by keeping the feast of Passover protects us from the pestilences. That disease is not random. Those that are getting it are not getting it by accident. Those that will not get it will not get it for a reason. And most that will not get it will be those that are keeping the commandments, the statutes, the judgments. Those that will not get it will be those that will be keeping Passover according to the scripture. This is why it's important that you post this video on your Facebook account, in your Twitter account. Send it to your friends. Send it to your loved ones. There are a lot more people in the world that do not believe the scripture, that reject the word of God. And when they clicked on this video and saw that it was about scripture, they clicked off and sent a message to the YouTube algorithm that it wasn't worth watching. Leave a comment letting YouTube know that this is vital information. Hit the subscribe button so YouTube will know that you are interested in this type of information.
It's like buying an album. It's like paying to see a movie. The YouTube algorithm will promote what it thinks people want to see. And people want the truth. Your loved ones want the truth. Your loved ones want to know what they can do about this coronavirus. Do your part. Help them out. And what is Passover? Passover is the communion feast instituted by the Messiah at the Last Supper. Looking over here in the book of Mark in chapter 14, we can see the Messiah commanding his disciples to drink wine and eat unleavened bread on the evening of the 14th day of the first month, the beginning of Passover. So that what Jubilees was talking about, celebrating the feast of Passover, was to drink wine and to eat bread on a certain night of the year, every year throughout our generations. And we don't have to worry about plagues. So how do you think those that we love, that don't spend as much time in the scripture as they should, and those that reject the scripture altogether will feel when one day they find out that they died of coronavirus because they wouldn't eat unleavened bread and drink wine on a certain day of the year. On the evening of April the 7th, 2020. This is why you have to help get this information out. Most who don't drink at all wouldn't have a problem drinking wine one night out of the year if they knew that the Father commanded it. And even people that don't like bread will probably eat some to keep themselves from getting the coronavirus that year. So do your part. Help to get this video out. Send a message to YouTube and the rest of the world. We want the truth.